Absolutely delighted to be able to um, speak on um, Easter Sunday. Yay! What a great day to speak. But um, but when I was um, preparing for um, today and we're looking at the resurrection, I absolutely couldn't get peace within myself um, because as Peter was saying before, the death of Christ, we've got to, you know, I just, I thought, I've got to say it because, you know, it's one part of the Bible that I don't know about you, but sometimes I avoid reading the Gospels about Jesus' death because I find it difficult. I, 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 it, it sort of touches my inside, and we can read it through the other books of the of, of the Bible, but, but sometimes I avoid it, and I don't look at it very often um, for that very reason. And it's and it's what it's all about, you know, about the death of Christ and then the resurrection. So I'm going to speak just very briefly um, to draw our attention to um, this Easter day as to um, Jesus' walk and his death on the cross. So after Jesus had been in um, the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed and he came out and he was arrested, um, the first thing they did, they took him to the Sanhedrin, and um, Jesus was accused of uh, many things, and he remained silent. He did not defend himself. He remained silent. And then he was asked, are you the Christ? Are you the Son of God? And, um, and this is what he said. He said, yes. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, in the future, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Wow. And at that, that was they just could not take any more of it. And that was when the decision was made that they were delighted by, this man will die. And they spat him, spat on him, and they struck him with their fists, and they slapped him, and they mocked him, and they said, "Come on, who slapped you? You prophesy to us. Who slapped you?" And then from there, the next day, would now on to Good Friday, they took him to Pilate, and Pilate said, "Are you the King of the Jews?" And Jesus said, "Yes." It is as you say. So when he was asked anything about his position, he said yes, and he said who he was. He was. He, he is the Christ. And he was accused, as he was before, by the chief priests and the elders. And again, he gave no answer, and he remained silent. And Herod's wife was troubled in a dream, and she said, you know, please don't have anything to do. This man's innocent. Um, you know, you know, have nothing to do with his death. Um, and at the people's request, I mean, Pilate tried to uh, get Jesus released, but when they had to choose for one person to be released on the Passover, um, the crowd shouted for Barabbas, who was um, a, a murderer, who was due for, um, in trouble for insurrection. And at this point, Pilate listened to what his wife had said and he'd seen it himself and he washed his hands and he said i am innocent of this man's blood and and it was terrible the next thing they said and he said let his blood be on us and our children um and then jesus was taken away and this time he was flogged um he would have been beaten to a pulp really and from there he was passed on to the soldiers who stripped him of his clothes and they placed a scarlet robe on him and they wove a crown of thorns and they put it on his head and they gave him a staff to hold and they knelt in front of him and they mocked him. And then they spat on him and they took the staff that they'd given him and they hit him again and again on the head with the staff and they mocked him and they led him out to be crucified. And Jesus was crucified um, at about nine o'clock in the morning. And in that time, he was offered, um, they, uh, they got Simon to 
uh, carry his cross, uh, made him carry the cross uh, when Jesus would have been um, too weak to do that. And they offered him wine mixed with gall. And I looked up gall, I'd heard of it, but I never didn't know what it was. And in the uh, dictionary, it said it's thought to have been a narcotic to help with the pain. And Jesus tasted it, but he refused it. And um, they hung him on the cross and they um, put nails in his hands and in his feet. And then in front of him, I would imagine, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. So was there um, lack of empathy for what was happening before him. And they hung the sign above his head saying, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And Jesus was crucified with two criminals next to him, looking like a criminal himself. And the people mocked and insulted him. And they said, you, who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. But I, I looked that up and actually um, it said in, in John two nineteen, he said that Jesus had said, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. He was talking about himself. You destroy me and I will, I will be raised in three days. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law said they saved, he saved others, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, for he said that he was, the, I am the son of God. They didn't understand at all that in remaining on the cross, Jesus was um, accomplishing the greatest victory that has ever been seen on earth. And then the two robbers, it says, were hurling insults at him until one obviously realized who Jesus was and who fell on the mercy of God. And, and he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And a natural response probably would have been to ignore him. Um, but Jesus didn't. He answered him with love because he loves. That's who Jesus is. And he said, truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. And then from 12 o'clock until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we really don't read anything much at all. But we know that there was darkness, complete darkness during this time. We know that Jesus would have endured immense pain. And during this time, he would have taken the, um, the sin of the whole world upon himself. And he would have seen the evilness of man at its most hideous. Um, and the scriptures even say that the sun hid his fa its face. And this was Jesus who lived that sinless life, the perfect sacrifice. Hebrews says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. And before it would have been animals that could not have atoned for, the, for, 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 for mankind um, completely. But, but through Jesus' death, and his resurrection on the cross, we can know forgiveness of sins. We can know eternity in our lives when we accept his forgiveness. And we can know that we have a place that Jesus is preparing in heaven for us. And out of the darkness, um, Jesus called out, Eli, Eli, lemai sabachthani, which means my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And um, I was looking, and these words were spoken hundreds of years before Christ's death on the cross in Psalm 22. So I had a look at that, and I've just taken out the verses. You can read it at home. I'm not reading all of it, just the verses that pertain to our Lord. And this is what it says. And the Jews would have known this. I'm sure as soon as he said that, this, this psalm would have come to their attention my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? 
I'm scorned by everyone. I'm despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust you even at my mother's breast. I'm poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display and people stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garments. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me and I will declare your name to the people. I will praise you for you have not Despised, I'm changing the tense, uh, the, um, the, the, the word there for he's for, for me. For, for, for you, for, for you have not despised or scorned the suffering of your afflicted one. You have not hidden your face from me, but you have listened to my cry for help. This was when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was not words of total abandonment, but this was a cry of hope. This would, Jesus would have known this psalm. This was a cry that he had been heard. You have not hidden your face from me. You have listened to my cry for help. And this is our hope, that in Christ we are not abandoned, that our cry for, for help has been heard, he will not leave us, but like the criminal on the cross, when we ask for forgiveness, he forgives us. And he takes our hands and he leads us through life. He leads us through death into, an, an, into eternal life. God's ultimate power was seen on the cross, winning everlasting life for us and knowing God's presence in our life. When he died, it says that there was an earthquake, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. I looked that up and it said it was about four inches wide. I was quite surprised. And it was torn in two. And the Holy of Holies, where only the high priest could go, where the presence of God was, was opened up to all of us through Christ Jesus. And in our lives, as we walk through life, he has not hidden his face from us. He listens to our cry for help. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go and quickly and tell the disciples, He has risen from the dead, and he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him and clasped his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. I'm sticking with um, Matthew. Um, so you can at home and um, have a look through the other gospel accounts but this is the one i'm sticking with um this morning because i've um staying with just staying with matthew well the first people um to go in search of jesus were the two marys uh, the first people to see the risen christ um, were the two marys 
And you think, why would Jesus choose um, that to be? And it was because they sought him. The two Marys, um, they didn't understand what had happened, but they went to seek Jesus. And the angel knew their motive for coming to the tomb. He said, I know you're here to find Jesus. And immediately they were told not to be afraid and that he was risen from the dead. Another Mary, I thought, well, let's put the Marys together, uh, was Mary of Bethany, who before um, the crucifixion took a pint of expensive perfume and opened it. It was, it was that Mary that poured it onto the feet of Jesus and wiped it with her hair. Now Judas, who was the one who was to betray Jesus, objected. He said, oh, this is a waste. It's a, a year's worth of wages. It could have been given to the poor. But his motives were probably shown through the scriptures, where it shows us that his real motive would probably have been um, linked to the way that he used to take money from the money bag for which he was the keeper. You can't always go with what people say. But Jesus understood Mary's motives. This was a lady I would imagine wouldn't have understood why she was doing this, but she knew that this was the right thing to do. And she would have recognized him as the Messiah and that only the very best was good enough uh, for the anticipated burial anointing. Now, I want to look um, now at the uh, motives of the, the guards. You know, they were placed at the tomb uh, for a very different reason. Uh, they were placed there. The chief priests and the Pharisees um, had remembered what Jesus said, that he was going to uh, die and, and be raised from the dead after three days. And they were a bit fearful that the disciples might come and steal the body, and then everybody would think he'd been raised from the dead. And they even put a seal um, on the stone. And these were people who were fearful of man. Their motive would have been fear. Fear of the, the situation that they found themselves in. And fear of what might happen to them if they don't follow those instructions very, very carefully. Therefore, when the earthquake happened, and suddenly they saw the angel there, and it said the angel was, um, was appearance was like lightning and, and, and clothes as white as snow. They weren't just afraid. He said they shook and they became like dead men. They were frozen. And sometimes circumstances in life can cause us to fear. And instead of seeking Christ, we can suddenly find that we are terrified by our circumstances and we can feel that feeling of absolutely freezing and becoming like dead people wondering what on earth is going to happen how will things work out also um, fear can cause us to live in our comfort zones in life if you're in a comfort zone it's a safe place to be. You're all right. Nothing's going to happen. Everybody's going to be happy with you. It's all going to go fairly straightforward. And sometimes we can cause um, people around us to cause us to go into our comfort zones. If you're not saying things out loud, well, then there's, nobody's going to get offended by you. If you're not... Um, you know, I, I don't know about you, but through life, uh, I'm just talking about life in general now, I've come across people who, to me, would appear um, quite fake. They seem to say all the right things. They seem to do all the right things. But you look and you think, I don't know you. I don't know who you are. Because they're playing it safe, and they're stopping um, revealing who they are. And it can be a real weakness. A fear of man can cause all sorts of weakness. But the women's experience was very different. They didn't understand why Jesus had died. He'd been taken from them. They were confused. But they went to seek Jesus, to anoint his body. It says, early on Sunday morning, they went to the tomb. And there, their experience was the same as the soldiers. The earthquake was there. 
The angel was there whose appearance was as lightning, who had clothes as white as snow. They experienced exactly the same thing, but the response was quite different. You know, it said that the angel said, you know, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's risen. Just as he said, look where, this was the place where he lay. Go and tell his disciples he's risen from the dead and he's going ahead of you into Galilee. Um, and you know what? They believed. They absolutely believed because they were expecting it. They were seeking Jesus. That's where the heart was. They weren't bothered about men. They wouldn't have turned up if they knew the guards were going to be there. But they were seeking Jesus. And the angel said it. And they believed it. Jesus is risen from the dead. They're going to go to Galilee. And they set off. And it was very strange that, um, that he said they were strangely filled with joy. They were still afraid. They didn't know what was happening. But they were filled with joy. And it can be like that in life, can't it? You know, Sometimes situations occur and we say, Lord, and we invite him into it and nothing's changed, um, but we, we have a strange sense of joy. What we shouldn't feel, we have a strange sense of peace. Where's that come from? Nothing's changed, but everything had changed for them because they'd heard from the angel, they'd acted on it, and that message caused them to go, brought them to action. Um, and, and, and this um, scripture here, I've wrote it from Deuteronomy, because God is always good. It says in Deuteronomy 31, The Lord himself goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. And that was certainly one for those women. Um, here we go. So anyway, so as he went, well, would you believe it? They met the risen Christ. And it says that they fell to his feet and they clasped hold of him. They, they'd seen the risen Christ. They didn't want to let him go. But what did Jesus tell them? He told them exactly the same message that the angel had told. And sometimes, you know, we, we, we get ourselves into situations and, and we seek God and he gives us his peace and then he confirms it. And it was so soon after, and it's happened with me loads of times, where I believe, I don't know why I believe, but I do. And then God confirms it very, very soon afterwards. And that's what he did uh, with the women. And he said, yeah, it's just as the angel has said, I'm going to meet the disciples. Go and tell them I'm going to meet them in Galilee. And when, um, and that's what the women did. And when he went to Galilee, um, he said, this is what he said. He says it um, a little bit further down in here. I'll just read it from my notes. It says, um, Jesus, and, and you can read all of this in um, Matthew 28. Um, he said, all power and authority that he had laid aside when he came to earth as a, as a man. Wait, uh, let me read it from here, actually. Um, where is it? Oh. Sorry. Here we are. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. When Jesus came to earth, he laid aside his power and authority. It all came through the Father. Everything he got came through his relationship with the Father. But he's now saying all power and authority has been given to me. And he's saying to the disciples, go, go, go in my power, go in my authority. And he says, I bapt um, he says, um, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go. And then I was thinking about that, and I thought, hmm, well, how actually do we um, fulfill that commission to go? Um, and, and it took me back to the last, um, the last Supper. And I thought, Jesus, at that point, at the Last Supper, he showed to his disciples who he is. This is me. I am a servant. He was going to. Sh he was. He did it on the on Good Friday when he died for us on the cross. But he's saying, if you want to know what it looks like to be me, if you want to know what it looks like to be my follower, this is it. 
and he took off his outer robe and he put a towel around his waist and he behaved like a slave who had no choice, but he chose to serve his disciples by washing their feet. On Good Friday, he chose to serve all of us by dying on the cross, making himself nothing, nothing at all. And that's what he's telling us to do. If you want to be, if you want to go out and win people for Christ, you've got to become nothing. You've got to become absolutely the lowest of the low, not thinking more highly of yourself than you, than you ought to, but think of yourself last. And that's a hard thing to do. But he's telling us, take on that servant role because, to, to, because the greatest victory that was ever achieved was through surrender. And as we surrender to God, we will see victories. We will see victories for him. His power and authority goes with us, but we're servants. We are not anybody special. We are just servants going out to serve others. In John 13, 15 to 17, it says, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. And he said this straight after he'd washed the disciples' feet. Very truly, I say, no servant is greater than his master. Master Jesus, washing the feet, we're not greater than him. Nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So let us go. He is risen. Let us go and make disciples of all men. <laughs>